Shalom, shalom. It's your brother Wild Rum. You're back with another lesson, Lord willing to be edifying. I want to start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Wahrukakwadash, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shah. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. And shalom to the 144,000 and the one third men, women, children that will escape the judgments of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah. This is another lesson uh, going into, man, um, Esau Edom. And uh, a lot of. Uh, Israelites can't s stomach the fact or understand why Esau is the so-called white man and the reason why the Lord set them up to be the vessels made for destruction. So let's get into this lesson. Uh, I got a couple of videos and then we play some scriptures afterwards and Lord willing to be edifying. Excuse me, miss. Pink jacket. These are for you. Oh. Okay, yeah. But they're not from me. They're, not. they're from somebody special. Okay. Do you know who it is? Uh, yeah. Jesus Christ. You can have it. Why? Is it, they gave it from Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm taken. By who? The devil, so. You're taken by the devil? Yeah, I'm taken by the devil. But Jesus can fill you with love, joy, and peace. That, the devil already does that for me. The devil gives you love, joy, and peace? Yeah. What's your name? Down in the underworld. What's your name? Uh, Christina. Christina. Yeah. Well, I do want to tell you that Jesus loves you. He wants a relationship with you. And he can really guide you to love, joy, and peace. You may be feeling alone. You may not be feeling oh, welcome. You. I don't know what Christian may have hurt you or showed you. That's my girlfriend. Oh, you date a girl? Yeah, I date a girl. Okay, and you know, that's, that's your choice. But I do want to tell you that Jesus loves you okay. and that he wants a relationship with you. Okay, And that these are for you. Okay. By who? That's my girlfriend. Does she believe in it too? Do you believe in God? You don't believe in Jesus? No, I'm an atheist. You're an atheist? What made you atheist? I just don't believe. I don't know. I used to be Catholic, but... They showed you the wrong type of Christianity? They did. Well, I do want to let you know that Jesus still wants a relationship with you and that he gave me these to give to well, you. Well, he can come down from the heavens and he can come here. Get away from my girlfriend. Okay. Y'all have a blessed day. Jesus loves y'all. Okay. And see, that's what uh, Jake don't understand, man. The Edomite you, you, you worshiping, who you call Jesus Christ, is not Yahweh Bashem Yahweh, the God of the Bible, the God of the heavens, the creator of everything. And two thirds of our people are going to understand soon enough that the Lord has set Esau Edom up for judgment. And on the left hand side, he is working on those people's spirit to do the wickedness that they do. Now, the Lord has had has had um, Esau set up for many years to work on the left hand side to bring in uh, wicked agendas and, and wicked philosophies and shit pretty much you know, the list goes on and on pretty much everything that's wicked Esau is in the forefront of it man and um these lessons we do are for the 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 blacks Hispanic and Native Americans which are the Israelites on the right hand side of Yahweh by Shem Shah at this time it's only one third is going to make it but all of Israel is going to be saved but the point is the Lord has set up the Israelites to be righteous and the Edomites to be wicked. And that's just the way the Lord has set it up. This is his movie. This is the way he, he wants it to be played out. Now, this video here is, and I'm going to pause it because they're playing a uh, uh, Edomite classic, I would say. And uh, you're going to see the judgment the Lord put on this board to bring on these Edomites, man. And this is a small glimpse of what's going to come to these Edomites, man. <laughs> You heard a you heard an anthem in the background, but look at the look at the the spirit that's going to come on this this bull man, and how he wreaks terror and havoc on these people man, and we just seen this is just a clip I I, I got, but watch this, look at the judgment he just put on this woman man, this guy right here. Look at that. Paul, let me see if I go back and see if it play. See, now it won't play. Let me see. Now it won't, <coughs> won't play. <coughs> it's a lot. Now it won't play. But this is spirit us on these eating mice, man. You can look, look, look. You can look and just tell them. I'm a bad little bitch and I'm snipped like a bark. And you can see the, the, the spirit they have on them, man. Come on, man. And 
And you can't tell me this madness is, is righteous. You can't tell me that madness is not. Now, what man would want to go with a miniskirt on, man, some heels on, and walk around like that, making itself a, a, a mockery to his whole nation? Which, I mean, it's not really a mockery to them because all of them feel the same way. They, they all has to have this uh, free spirit, I would say, because they believe they can do whatever they want to do and never get judged. But through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, you blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans, the Lord has set you up to be separated from him, the Edomites and the heathen. This is Romans 9. We're going to start here. Romans 9 and 19. He says, but one of you have... Like it, but one of you will say to me, if this is so, how can power find fault it with anyone? Who can resist power's will? See that? Who can resist the Lord's will? So the Lord set them up to be the wicked. He set them up to be the wicked, man. And nothing we can do to change that. He says, but who are you, my friend, to talk back to power? Can the clay... Can the clay pot, it's like it, a clay pot does not ask the man who made it, why did you make them like this? So we can't say, and this is the G on, GNT, man, I'm sorry. I didn't say this in the beginning. This is uh, Romans 9, verse 19 in the GNT. The point is, and this, this is what I'm bringing this, this scripture out. The Lord makes these, he made the Edomites to be the Edomites, man. He made two thirds to be the two thirds. Who are you to argue with the how about Shimei man? Again, verse 20 says, but who are you, my friend, to talk back to power? A clay pot does not ask the man who made it, why did you make me like this? See that? So the Lord made them like this. You can't go, you can't fight against the Lord, man. After all, the man who makes the pots has the right to use the clay as he wishes. See, he using, he using those Edomites the way he wishes, man. He's setting them up to be destroyed, man. And to make two pots from the, the same lump of clay, one for special occasions and the other for ordinance, ordinary use, for other ordinary use. He says, and the same is true of what power has done. He wanted to show his anger and to make his power known. See that? That's the reason why he set up Esau to rule the way he's ruling, to do the things that he's doing. This is true, man. And we get down on ourselves because our people are, are, are going off in, 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 in all matter of madness. But we know Esau is, is leading them to be this way, man. He said, the same is true of what power has done. He wanted to show his anger and to make his power known, but he was very patient in enduring those who were the objects of his anger, who were doomed to destruction. See that? These Edomites are set up to do the will of the Lord on the left-hand side and to be doomed to destruction, man. This is their fate. This is how they end. This is how the Lord is going to end the rulership of Esau Edom. And I want to get this in the, in the NLT, man. Just that, that last point. Because I'll be read in the King James several times and go over and over it. But it's a clear point that I want to make in, 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 um, in 22. Romans 9 and verse 22, it says, In the same way, now let me go back up. Here you go, 21. He says, when a potter makes jars out of clay, doesn't he have the right to use the same lump of clay to make one jar for decoration and another to be thrown into, uh, to, to throw garbage into? See that? So the Lord has made the, the Israelites to be the decoration and he made the Edomites to be, to be garbage, man. <laughs> I mean, to be thrown into. The destruction, man. 
So the Lord has, has put the spirit on Esau Edom to be the wicked, man. Verse 22, it says, in the same way, even though power has the right to show his anger and his power, he is very patient with those on whom his anger falls, who are designed, it's like designated for destruction. See, the Lord has the power to, he could have had the, he had the power to correct Esau, but he didn't. This is the way the Lord has his movie set up, man. And who are you to, to go against what Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah has put in place, man? You, 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 what, is, what, uh, what the saying go? Your hands are too small to box with, with God. And that's a true statement, man. So the Lord has these people set up to be destroyed, man. He has the Israelites to, set up to be saved. And that's the only the elect of those men and women and children. Let's get back to the King James. This is Malachi 1 in verse 2. It says, I have loved you, saith Yahweh by Shem Yahushai. Yet ye say, Wherein has thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? See that? These were twin brothers, man. But one was set up to be the decoration, and one was trash, man. Garbage. <laughs> set up to be destroyed, man. Just um, uh, roughly paraphrasing the NLT we just read. Was not Jacob, was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith Yahweh by Shem Yahushai? Yet I loved Jacob and I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste. See that? Laid his mountain and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness, man. So this is the way the Lord has the Edomite set up, man. And we see it. We, if you, you, you continue to seek Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, you see how the Lord is working, man. You see his, his workings on our enemies, man. He says, whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus say Yahweh by Shem Yahushai of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. See that? He has built up his kingdom. Now the Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahushai is coming to throw it down, man. And he's called the border of wickedness. Everything stems from him as wickedness, man. All over the earth. Is with Job with 924, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked, man. And the people whom Yahweh Bashim Yahushai has indignation, hath indignation with forever, man. So the Lord has indignation. Let's get that word, man. Indignation. Let me see if I can. Blue letter wasn't working the other day. Let me see if it works now. It's righteous anger, but we're going to get it. We're going to look it up. He has indignation with this nation forever. It's Malachi 4. Not Malachi 4. 1 verse 4. We're looking up the word indignation. H2194. To denounce, express indignation be indignant to have indignation be indignant be angrily indignant I can barely get it out in, uh, indignant be defiant to be abhorrent abhorrent to express, express indignation in speech denounce curse see that curse to show indignation show anger Properly to form at the foam at the mouth to be arranged, a bore, abominable, be angry, defying indignation. Let's get a quick Google definition, man. Indignation, anger or annoyance provoked by what is perceived as unfair treatment. <laughs> So the Lord have mercy on who he will have mercy on, man. Let's get the word indignant. Feeling or show, showing anger or annoyance at what is perceived as unfair treatment. And you see the... Uh,
I was going to go down a little bit more. Yeah, but you see it, man. His indignation for every is, is his hatred. His anger. Having indignation. To show indignation, show anger. So the Lord is showing, he's going to show anger on Esau, Edom. Let me get it one more time. Whereas Esau, Edom, saith, we are impoverished, but we will rebuild, we will return and rebuild the desolate places. Thus saith Yahweh Bashem Yahushua of hosts, they shall build, but we shall throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom Yahweh Bashem Yahushua hath indignation forever. See, anger, righteous anger on the Edomites, man. And your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, Yahweh Bashem Yahushua will be magnified from the border of Israel. And the Lord is being magnified and exalted by the children of Israel, the elect of the children of Israel, man. So we know what the Lord said is going to happen to Esau Edom. He's showing his anger to them. His righteous anger on Esau Edom. And Yahweh Shah is coming to bring them out of rulership, man. This is Isaiah 63, and I'm going to start at verse 1. He says, who is this that cometh from Edom with thy garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speaketh in righteousness, mighty to save. And we, we know exactly who they're speaking about. Yahweh Shah, man, coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra, man. Basra being a capital of, um, of Edom, man. And the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah is mighty to save. So that's how we know this is talking about Yahweh Shah coming from Edom. And why would he, why is he coming from Edom? He says, wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like the, like him that treadeth in the wine fat. So he, he, he is coming and it's going to look like he's, he's not going to physically have blood on him, but he's making a metaphor speaking. He's coming from stomping out the grapes, man. Like he treaded in the wine fat, being in the, 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 um, someone that's, that's stomping out the grapes and having blood, uh, not blood, but having grape stains on his on his garment. He says, I have trodden the wine press alone and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger and I trample them in my fury. See that? The Lord is going to trample the Edomites in his fury, in his anger. That's why he has indignation with them forever. And trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will stain all my raiment. See, the Lord is telling you the judgment that he's going to bring on him is like he's stomped out the wine press. He has blood sprinkled on his garments from stomping out the wine, the grapes. So that's how he's going to tread down the Edomites, man. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my re redeem, it's like in the year of my redeem has come. And I looked, and there was none to help. So they have no power to stop Yahweh Shai from judging them. And I wondered that there was none to uphold me. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury, it upheld me. So the Lord's judgment on Esau Edom is going to satisfy his, his um, I ain't going to say satisfied in a sense like that, but it's going to accomplish his judgment that he has set for them. And I will tread them down. It's like I will tread down the people in my anger and make them drunk with my in my fury. And I will bring down their strong their strength to the earth. And I and I and I I butcher that a little bit, but he's going to bring their power structure down, man. All their satellites and all the things they have in the heavens, everything is coming down with his his rulership, man. Everything is coming down. There's, there's not going to be a, um, the internet up while he's destroyed. Everything that he's, he's set up, his his kingdom, his his rulership, his hierarchy, and I'm speaking of the elite, all that's coming down, man, to the earth. They're going to be as there never was before, man. It's never going to be a remembrance of the Edomite kingdom or the Edomite rulership. It's not going to be talked about as, as, as a great kingdom. We don't know that that was the time of, of wickedness, man, the time of evil. Anytime it's spoke of Esau's kingdom, man, Babylon the Great, is going to be spoke of as the one of the wicked empires ever to exist. 
it's not going to be talked about as high in stature of of what, what we should do or what we should to to um to um live after. We're going to know that we sell, we we suffered here in Babylon the Great, the wickedest kingdom ever that existed in the face of the, on the face of the earth, man. And that's why the Lord is going to bring them down, man. Let me read this again. It says verse six. It says, "And I will tread down the people in my anger, and." make them drunk with in my fury and I will bring down their strong their strength to the earth. So the Lord is going to bring down their military might as well. So they're slated to be judged, man. And we know the Lord is going to do triumphantly against them, man. It's not going to it's not going to be anyone to stop Yahweh Shah from judging them. This is Psalms 108. I just want to get the point right here in verse, verse 12, uh, 13, rather. Uh, verse 13, it says, Through power we shall do violent, valiantly, for he is it that shall tread down our enemies. So the Lord is going to tread down our enemies, man. <clears throat> and that's what we're patiently waiting for. For the Lord to come back and bring judgment on our enemies, man. Get us out of captivity and redeem us from the earth, man, for the destruction. That's what we're patiently waiting on, man. And the Edomites have to come down before we can get our kingdom. This is Ezekiel 35 and 1. It says, Moreover, the word of Yahweh Shemiah came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. See, Mount Seir represents Esau Edom as well, man. It says, and prophesy against it. And that's what we're doing, man. We're telling you Esau Edom is going into slavery. They're going to be judged. Their kingdom is going to be taken down. And they're never going to rule ever again. And say unto it, thus say you how about Shem Yahushua power. Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. See, we're telling you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Yahushua, the Lord is against the Edomites, the so-called white man. In, in, in Europe, in Russia, wherever he is. The Lord is against you. That's what the Lord has the spirit on the, the men of the Lord to prophesy. And say unto it, Thus said Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah Power, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. That's plain, man. There's no way of getting around that. And I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. See, the Lord is going to, to show Esau that he was only a man. He was never a god. He was never a power. He was just his pawn in his left hand side, on the left hand side, doing the will of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah on the left hand side. Man, he is the physical counterpart of Satan on earth. And a lot of them know, a lot of them know that. But the Lord is going to lay him desolate, man. He is coming down. For what? Because thou has had a perpetual hatred and shed the, the, the shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time of their iniquity had an end. So you did this all to the children of Israel, so you're going to be judged for what you've done, man. Because you say, well, these kids ain't did nothing. Yes, they, they did. They, they came back to the same spirits coming back. Because they was, they was against us in the, in, in the time of, in a time of slavery. In a time of um, Egypt, when we was trying to get through their land and they wouldn't let us pass, these are the same spirits coming back, man. He says, therefore, as I live, said Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. And see what the Lord said he's going to come out, come back doing, stomping out the wine fat, man, symbolizing the blood that he's going to trample on Esau Edom. He said, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou has not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. And that's what's coming to Esau Edom, man. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. And I will fill his mountains with his slain men. And that's going into the war, man. Here in Babylon as well, man. The destruction is coming on Babylon as well. He says, in thy hills... And in thy valleys and in all thy rivers 
shall they feel slow, slow, let me slow down. Shall they fall that are slain with the sword? I will make thee perpetual desolation and thy city shall not return. And ye shall know that I am Yahweh by Shem Shah. And that's what we prophesy in Esau's land, man. You have camps in every major city in Babylon the Great, man. Bring out this word and doing exactly what the Lord said. Set thy face uh, against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. And that's what we're doing through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Shah, man. We are ambassadors just like Obadiah was, man. Let's get here. This is Obadiah 1 in verse 1. The vision of Obadiah. Thus said Yahweh by Shem Shah power concerning Edom. I have heard a rumor from Yahweh by Shem Shah, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. And that's what the Lord is putting on our spirit to do. We're raising up against them in the battle of, of, of the Lord's word, man. We're not physically going out here and doing anything. We're, re we're raising up against them because we are ambassadors for Yahweh by Shem Shah to tell him that his kingdom is going down, that his rulership is ending. Drop it down to verse um, 7. Uh, yeah, drop it down to verse 7. Let's start there. It says, All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. And that's how he's going out, man. Those that he thought that was it was was under him and was never going to backstab him, that was de he was deceived by that man, and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There are there is none understanding in him. See the trap is laid for Esau, man. Shall I not in that day, saith Yahweh by Shem Yahweh, shall even destroy the wise man out of Edom, and the understanding out of Mount out of the Mount of Esau? And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter, man. So this is the judgment that's coming to them. And we are ambassadors of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh to prophesy against them, to let them know what exactly is going to happen to them. For what? For thy violence against thy brother Jacob. Shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. So what you've done to the children of Israel has has put a stain on your on your on your, on your legacy. That's the word that comes to mind. Your legacy, man. Everything you stood for, man. What you've done to the children of Israel is going to blot out everything you've done, man. This is Romans nine. Back to Romans nine. In verse 12, it says, It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And this is a plain statement, man. It was basically re, um, uh, Apostle Paul just reiterated what Malachi said, man. And this is a true statement. And that's the reason why Esau is going down, man, because what he did to the children of Israel, man. He's going to be cut off by slaughter. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with power? Power forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So the Lord telling you through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Shah, he set Esau up to be destroyed, man. And the Lord Put the spirit on these uh, um, on these uh, scholars to write in the Zonda Van Baba dictionary that Edom will receive no mercy from the power from Yahweh Bashem Shah, man. So that's what reason why this statement is made. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. So the Lord t told us, the scholars wrote, I mean, it's in the scripture, we already know. But the scholars know for a fact that, that Esau is not going to have any mercy from the Most High Power, man. So the Lord is telling, telling, telling Moses, uh, right here again, it's verse 14, it says, What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with power? Power forbid. So no, there's no unrighteousness with power. 
For he said unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So the Lord is telling you, it's his, it's his, his, his will to do what he wants to do, man. Not ours, man. He will have mercy on who he will have mercy and compassion on who he will have compassion. But he set up Esau to be the vessel fit for destruction. Let me drop back down and get it again in the King James. This is a, uh, this is a dropping, a, dropping down in verse 21. It says, have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if power willing to show his wrath and to make his power known endureth with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fit for destruct fit to destruction, fitted to destruction. Let me get it all out. So he has a vessel fitted for destruction, and that's Esau's lot, man. He is that vessel fit to be destroyed, and that he may make known his riches of his glory. With on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. See, he has prepared the Israelites unto glory, man. You blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans, man. But if you don't see it, we can't make you see it. If you can't get it, we can't make you get it. You have to repent to the Lord, and the Lord will put your spirit to be able to receive it. He'll have your spirit be able to receive the word that he has written out for us, man. Because we know this world... It's going to end, man. Esau's world is for the end. And let's, and let's, get, to, let's get that, man. We ended on that. This is 2nd Ezra 6. The 2nd Ezra 6, and I'm going to start at verse 6. It says, Then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone and through none other. By me also shall... They shall be ended and by none other. See, by the Lord is going to be ended and by none other, man. And that's how we know the Lord, well, Isaiah 63 said he's going to come back and stomp, the, stomp them out, man. He's coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra, man. He's talking about the Edomites. He's coming to judge the Edomites. Verse 7, it says, Then answered I and said, What shall be the part and asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first? And the beginning of the of it that followeth. And he said unto me, From I Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the foot, the heel of Esau, sloppy. And Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So the Lord is ending Esau's kingdom, and that's what World War Three is slated for. East, uh, World War III is slated for Esau's kingdom to be destroyed in the beginning of Jacob's kingdom, which is Yahweh kingdom. So we, we, we know that we are at the end of this thing, man. We're at the end of this thing. We're at the end of Esau's kingdom. So I'm going to end it there. Lord, when it was edifying. Shalom.